All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, this is, I guess, the third video. The last couple we've uh, focused on getting the Pi Toolbox up and running and set up, and now we're going to start actually doing some data analysis. What I'm going to walk you through today is really my kind of my basic flow that I go through at the track. Uh, I really try to do this after each session if I can, uh, at a minimum, really at the end of the day, but ideally each session. So uh, what we're doing here is I. I always want to compare a couple things. I always want to take the last session and compare those laps to what my best lap is ever at that track with the same car. Um, and then I also like to also compare against my best lap uh, for that event. So I'm doing a little more of an apples to apples conditions, you know, same conditions uh, type of test. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to compare uh, what's really my best lap at VIR. That's the lap in blue here um, with another lap. Uh, that was also a, a good lap for me, um, but this actually happened previously, and that's the lap in red. So it's a it's the 157.5 lap compared to a 159.3. Uh, these are also interesting, both same car, um, but the the red lap was on um, the OEM Michelin Pilot uh, Sport Cup twos. Uh, the blue lap was on uh, some Pirelli scrubs. Uh, we'll try to look later at at the data, but frankly. I don't think the tires are the difference here. It was primarily actually just driving style and some external factors. So uh, the first thing I want to do here is is actually look at our split time. So before we set up a um, worksheet that had uh, basically split times for both sessions. So up top here, I'm going to take my, uh, my best lap ever. That's the 57.5. And I'm just going to literally take those sector times and I'm going to compare them against my best sector times for everything else in the session I'm comparing them to. So 1426, 1442, 64, 76. So as we walk through this, um, basically all my sector times on that fast lap were better than my best sector times in any lap in, that, in the session we're comparing against. So there's, there's not too much to see here just by doing the sector time comparison. So... If we go back over to inputs, the next thing for me is really to look at the, the time comparison. So, you know, I added the same things I always add, which is accelerator, brake, speed, and then this compare time channel. So, you know, blue being the fast lap is a baseline. This red line is basically how much the time is deviated or, or basically where I was slower and faster uh, over the course of the lap. Um, one thing I want to point out about the, the brake channel um, is that's not brake pressure uh, or, or how hard you're pushing the pedal. It's literally a brake pedal position sensor. So if your pads are running low, you'll see that it looks like you're giving it a lot more brake effort, um, but it's really just the pedals obviously moving farther because you have farther to push to get, actually get to the pad material against the rotor. Um, in this case, they're both fairly similar, uh, but it is useful for uh, taking a look at how your braking technique is. So you know, here you can see the blue line um, was pretty consistent. You know, I ramped up quickly, kind of a consistent brake pressure, and then I released fairly smoothly. Um, whereas in the, the slower lap, I actually had that spike, and then I, I kind of bled off a little bit, and I modulated it, and then I finally trailed it off into corner entry. Um, looking at uh, the actual data, we're going to do a couple things. So the first is I'm going to close off this left-hand panel. If you want to get it back, you can just hit Alt-1, 2, or 3. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and we'll just expand this down a little bit so we have a little more real estate to work with. Sometimes it can be hard to grab. All right, so the first thing is, you know, obviously my, my slower lap, I lost time um, actually in the braking zone. And I think, again, that maps back to the braking technique we saw up here. And I'm not going to spend too much time focusing on where that uh, slower lap was slower because quite honestly if you look it was slower in, in a lot of places but really what I want to look at is where are the places where it was faster like where did I actually start gaining time relative to my fastest lap so a good example of that is right here so you can see you know the time kind of popped up I lost time basically relative to my fast lap but then I started to gain it back so why is that well we can first of all let's figure out where we are on the track so you can kind of infer that by looking at the segments that are uh, the actual corners that I'd set up on the track map. Or you can just actually go to the map itself. And you can see basically we're just about at the apex of turn one where I start gaining time back. 
So looking at the inputs, it's interesting because what you see is uh, I'm actually at full back to full throttle sooner and more consistently uh, through turn one compared to my slower lap, yet I gained a lot of time. So why is that? Let's zoom in. That's kind of the first thing. So the Z key will let you zoom in on that section. And what you're seeing is, whereas I overslowed a little more on the slow lap, my speed you know, dropped down to, if we look over here, it's 48 as compared to 52 miles an hour. As I got back on the gas, I actually ended up um, being faster through the corner. So there's an extended section here going through turn one where I'm about five miles an hour faster. And so, you know, that tells me that I needed to carry more speed through the middle of the corner, um, still get back to the throttle. The fact that I was able to get back to full throttle here means that I wasn't anywhere near the limit um, and carry that speed all the way through the corner. So looking at our time trace, again, it's zoomed in as well. You know, that went from 0.24 seconds slower. The base guy made a tenth back. So that really minor tweak of just carrying a little more speed through the corner um, was a tenth that I, I basically lost relative to my faster lap. So we'll hit backspace. We'll go ahead and back back out again and take a look at this some more. Again, here you see it's, it's fairly consistent. Again, looking at the speed traces, looking at the time trace. I'm just consistently going a little bit faster through the corners all the way through here. There's there's a lot of it's very similar, but there's oftentimes two, three mile an hour difference. And that two, three mile an hour difference, by the time we get to the to the climbing S's, you know, is good for three quarters of a second of the, the lap time delta. But here you see again I started to claw back some time. So you know, some of this we could pick up just from looking at the video. Let me resize that a little bit again. And you can see in my slower lap, which is on the right, I was a good three miles an hour faster in that, that right-hand section that leads up to turn 10. So we can also look at it on our map. And you can see this is that last right-hander, and then you've actually got a little straightaway before you turn into uh, turn 10. So again, that extra little bit of speed through there allowed me to claw back from a time delta that started at 0.74. I got it back down to 0.50. So another quarter of a second. And again, through here, and also you can see this in the speed trace, right? You can see very clearly how uh, the red lap is significantly faster all the way through this section of the S's. So here we are uh, in Oak Tree. Again, you can see I clawed back a little bit of speed going through Oak Tree. Um, and I did that by rolling more speed through 11 and 12. Um, if you recognize this, this is kind of, you've made the first right into 11, you're making another right into 12. I clawed back some speed, but then I start again really taking off. So what was different here? Like why am I suddenly at 89 miles an hour and I'm at 80 here? Well, if you look, it's pretty obvious. I went to second gear as opposed to third. So that downshift into second um, gave me a lot more acceleration that uh, resulted in more speed. And again, looking at the speed trace here, what you're seeing is uh, initially a, what, six mile an hour difference. And we hold a good kind of three, four mile an hour difference all the way down the back straight. So that takes me from a, a time delta to start out at what 0.4 seconds to by the time we're breaking at the end of the back straight here it's 1.15 so you know that's what um, math is hard sometimes but you know that's seven tenths eight tenths of a second you've got there that was made up simply by going into second carrying about the same speed through uh, oak tree but being able to carry that extra speed all the way down the back straight so these are kind of the basic things I look at um, you're going to see a common theme, you know, uh, pretty much throughout traces where you'll see being able to roll more speed mid corner, being able to get on the gas sooner results in more speed. Speed over distance is frankly just going to drop your lap time. So it's, it's all the stuff you heard about in class. It's all the stuff, all the coaching books talk about just manifested in real life. And, you know, again, you could see it. I'm kind of scrolling down the track a little bit here at the roller coaster. Same thing, right? Good three miles an hour difference. Now, you might think, well, that's because you're running slicks and you weren't running and you were running street tires before. 
Um, I'll be honest with you, my experience has been that the Cup 2s are every bit as grippy as the uh, Slicks are. Um, they don't tend to hold up as well over a long session. You know, they're really good for two, three laps and they get kind of hot. But, you know, again, what's the data actually show us about that? So if we click on my session here or on my uh, display, we'll go to Alt 2. And let's go ahead and add lateral Gs. And you can see, we'll just, if you look at this across the entire lap, this is our lateral G channel right in the middle here. It's pretty consistent, right? The, the lateral G's I'm pulling with slicks as, a, as opposed to the cup twos, pretty much the same, not really much of a difference. Uh, in fact, you see occasional spikes where it's higher on the cup twos and you'll see occasional spikes where it's higher on the slicks, but overall the level grips the same. It's really just driver technique, confidence, and being able to roll that speed through the corner and get on the gas sooner. All right, I think that's uh, all we're gonna do for today. This is kind of a good intro to looking at your own data. And again, for me, I like to compare my own laps because it's the same car, it's the same driver, it's the same track. You know, that tells me it's not just that someone else could do it, it means that I actually did that. I may, I went faster through a section of the, of the track that I didn't in my last session, and so I know mentally that's something I can easily achieve. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, call it a session, and please post up your comments and any suggestions or ideas you have for other things you'd like to hear about. Thanks.